Welcome to Horton and Plants Oral Bites with your hosts, Kate Bootman, Will Murphy, and Carl Horton. Uh, say what for hats? No hats. I'm wearing yeah. wigs. <laughs> good evening, everybody. Welcome back on this Friday evening. Hope you've had a good week and you're looking forward to a very, very hot and sweaty weekend. Um, you'll see that I am joined by the devilish duo in the form of Will Murphy and we have Carl Horton. Good evening, gentlemen. Good evening. And we're absolutely we're absolutely thrilled to say that we're joined by Shimran from um, Evo Dental. Good evening. Oh, yeah. Thanks for having me on. <laughs> no good. problem. It's going to be our pleasure. Our pleasure. Um, right, boys, come on. I want you to indulge us. Carl Horton, you can start us off. How's your week been? Uh, short and sweet, really. It's been um, COVID central at uh, my son's school. So, unfortunately, he's now going to miss the last few days of school because they're self-isolating, dropping like flies. Uh, today, just chatting off air with Simran, it's been quite an interesting day. Uh, thankfully, a nice, straightforward sinus lift um, with a fairly few straightforward implants. So, that was nice at Liberty Place. Malvern uh, the day before that, so still doing the travelling around. Um, you know, again, two great clinics, excellent support. Um, Something like on the online stuff, building up the courses, and it's been a real thirsty day, so I have to take a little sip of this. Will, you're watching really Oh. <laughs> is, that, is, that the, is that the absent? Oh, get lost, seriously. Yeah, yeah, it's very refreshing. Horton and Cole Horton. Horton vodka. <laughs> <laughs> Gets us through the day. Thank you, this alcohol-free gin. Um, which tastes uh, just like gin. Oh, yeah. Which, you know, it's, but it's, they can't yeah. call it gin, can they? They have to call it something else. Because you can't say gin if it's... You can't have alcohol-free gin, apparently. Oh, okay. There you go. I, Every, you know everybody. What? Yeah, thank you. It's not just teeth you get on here, is it? <laughs> no. No. <laughs> uh, and, yeah, just, just nice, straightforward. A lot of planning. I mean, so I've had a few little... Um, issues with a couple of the, the bits on the, on the planning side just because we use um, some software that we have to upload and we so we, we use uh, a company where they email it to us and just struggled sometimes getting that so that's that's been my pain of the week and hopefully we've managed to resolve that with a few little um, sort of what, what I don't know what you call it really um, I don't know I don't know what you'd put Protocols, should we say? Put some protocols into place, so hopefully that won't uh, cause us any niggles. That's been it. But I, I know there's, there's somebody that we're going to talk to that's got some amazing protocols, no. but, uh, <laughs> which I think uh, just blew me away when uh, I saw how smooth they were. But anyway, that, that's been my week. Your week, good man. You've survived. That's a, that's a yeah. good sign. So, Will Murphy, what about yourself? Uh, yeah, very nice week. Started off with a nice uh, weekend in the Cotswolds last weekend. Very good. Wasn't quite, didn't quite go to plan because the whole idea was to stay at this sort of nice uh, Cotswoldy pub restaurant, which um, you know is pretty well renowned for uh, the food and uh, the restaurant. However, when we got there, it sort of appeared it was all very quiet and. Um, so we were booked into a sort of sister restaurant for the first night, and that was fine. And then the second day, I worked out something wasn't quite right, really, because there seemed to be nobody in the kitchen. And then it transpired that um, the chefs had all had to isolate. So they were keeping it under wraps a little bit. And all of a sudden, they were kind of like, but we can do you a pizza. You're like, mm, let me think. <laughs> so there was a little... A little van in the car park, sort of firing at pizzas, which looked very nice, but I guess that wasn't really the whole reason for going. So um, <laughs> but I, I did a little bit of passive-aggressive um, customer relations work, and um, <laughs> our money was refunded, and we, we, we headed home and had a nice takeaway. Oh, bless so, you. yeah, maybe another time, but it was great. Yeah. It was good fun. We actually um, we thought we'd drive past uh, Jeremy Clarkson's farm, because... <laughs> Because he's in the in the area and he's got his little yeah. shop, yeah. So the diddly squat farm shop. So we drove past, and there was a queue like about a mile long for this tiny little shack that just oh my you know, gosh. sells a bit of tat. So we thought, forget that. Turned around, <laughs> headed for home. Uh, dentistry wise, yeah, just running around from Birmingham to Dorwich to 
Hertfordshire. Everything's gone pretty smoothly this week. I've got I've got no tales of woe to report. You know, fantastic. All the implants are in the right place. Um, in terms of planning, I use a sort of pen and a bit of paper. So um, <laughs> <laughs> nothing wrong with that, Will. I, uh, wrong. Yeah, yeah. I, I tend not to have those glitches unless like the nib breaks off the, the <laughs> pencil. Um, but you know that can be resolved. So um, yeah, apart from that, everything's run pretty smoothly. There you go. Brilliant. That's fantastic. That's what I like to hear. Has it been one of those cheeky four-day weeks for you? No, I'm afraid I've done the full five days. Um, oh, I know someone's got to do it. Yeah, there you go. We'll get it. We'll get over it. Oh, fantastic, fantastic. Well, boys, I'm glad to see you've survived your week. Um, and as I say, uh, Simran, we're really, really pleased you've joined us. Now, obviously, we know a little bit about um, yourself and where you work uh, with Evo Dental. Um, can we ask you to tell those out there who don't know what Evo Dental is? Yeah, so we're, um, uh, we're a, uh, a clinic that focuses our sort of work on just uh, full jaw implant rehabilitation so rather than um, sort of doing sectional singles um, uh, and that sort of work we tend to uh, we just treat patients who are sort of terminally dentate or dentulous and, um, uh, and we just do full jaw implant rehabilitations okay and carl was um well will you spoke about it um when you came back from the evo experience but the process is um yeah. are absolutely amazing i think, so, you're, I boys, think you're underselling please. it here Can, uh, <laughs> if i'm gonna be honest so. yeah so um i think uh i certainly think the practice itself i think started around 2007 up in liverpool and um uh, originally it was sort of just uh you know it was an implant practice and i think over the years it's morphed into what it is today um, and I think that's the where the sort of evolution name comes from, Evo Dental, is um, uh, over the years, yeah, it's morphed into just focusing on that one line of work. And um, I think it's it's got its benefits of being sort of focused in, in one area. You know, you can really uh, specialise uh, uh, the whole sort of setup, even the sort of uh, the clinic to just that one treatment rather than having to cater for, for everything else. So, so who, got... who's behind it and, and what's your role in the whole thing? So the, the company is, uh, it was founded by um, uh, a chap called VJ and um, uh, we, my role in the company is, so I'm the, I'm the senior clinician in our uh, Solihull clinic. We have uh, three clinics, one in uh, Liverpool, one in Heathrow, and, uh, and now one in Solihull, which we opened, I would say, uh, May, uh, late May. It feels like years, but it, I think it's only been about six weeks. <laughs> uh, and um, <laughs> yeah, I, I'm, I've, uh, I've been with the company for, I think I joined 2019. And um, I, uh, I've been up in Liverpool working with Isabella, who uh, I think you may have met. And, yeah. um, and then since we've uh, since we've opened our Solihull clinic i've uh, i've sort of migrated down here so i'm still still looking for somewhere to live but uh yeah we're we're getting there oh Solihull is a pretty nice place to live can yeah. argue with that so um what's your background in implants where did where did you get into it all so um a bit of a long-winded story i guess uh i uh, i i qualified in uh, 2016 and then i I, um, I joined a practice over in Lincolnshire um, and uh, I had a patient come in with a lower all on four and a couple of implants and um, sort of being a couple of months out of uni, she was like, you know, how's it looking? Is it looking good? And I was thinking to myself, I know what this is, but I don't know how healthy it is and, and whatnot. Uh, so I thought to myself, you know, this is something I really need to sort of uh, look further into. So I, uh, we had an implantologist in house, so I, I started spending a bit of time with him, and I thought just just watching him do placements and follow ups and things, and and then uh, I was just watching, thinking, oh, it's, it's how hard can it be? You make a hole, put a screw in it, you know. So it's, it's pretty straightforward, great. Um, and uh, he was, it's actually uh, Sam Mohammed, and uh, and uh, he does a course with uh, Mukesh and Azar. So I, I thought to myself, well, if he's local, easy to get a mentor. I'll I'll do his course. So I did his course in 2018 
and um, yeah, I did his course, and uh, it was great, really good experience. Um, learned a lot, and uh, and then a job came up for an intern position at Liverpool. I think just as I was finishing, and I was you know really excited. I was just finished my course. I thought this you know this is this is what I want to do, and um, the the opportunity came up. I'd actually met VJ um, on one of the the, the, the social events after uh, um, uh, uh, after some of the lectures, and he told us all about it. You know what it's like and uh, what happens. So I thought, you know, it's, it sounds like the place to be if you want to sort of develop that side of your uh, clinical skills. And uh, I uh, I applied for the job, and I think maybe maybe I got it because. Um, I'd met VJ. I don't know, um, but uh, um, and then I started in 2019 with uh, with Isabella, and she really that's where most of my um, surgical training has been. We have a sort of an internal training pathway, and she's um, she's taken me, like I say, from a, uh, someone who's got very little experience placing implants to doing, um, you know, uh, um, what would it be? Initially, I was doing probably in Liverpool four arches a week. Up to now, doing probably eight to ten. That's a pretty That's rapid, a, uh, yeah, turnaround, isn't it? So, I mean, but I guess in some, in terms of years and months, your experience, I suppose, is you know, it's it's been pretty, pretty rapid and a quick learning curve, I'd imagine. Um, I mean, even now on these full arch cases, sometimes what you've planned and what you go in to put your implants into can be wildly different. Sort of, how do you sort of cope with that? Is it having somebody yeah. over your shoulder with more experience to, to bring in? I think that was, I think that was one of the um, uh, factors that really drew me to going down that pathway with Evo was, you know, I, I, it's, it must be such an intimidating prospect to learn something like uh, f uh, full arch uh, implant rehab uh, alone in practice with a mentor, you know, there's so many different variables, think so many things that, that you have to account for, you know, so many things that can go wrong and um, you need that support. So I think the great thing about being in Evo is it's the only thing we're doing. I've got great support. You know, Isabella was always in the next room and it was a very gradual process, you know, everything even, you know, to a certain extent, um, these sorts of cases can all be, um, thought through uh, as a process and you can learn all the steps of the process and because I'm not needing to deliver the whole thing you can learn it in bite-sized chunks and then put it all together and that was and that was how we did it and then we would internally sort of grade our cases you know from easiest to most difficult and you would then start with the easiest ones and then slowly slowly uh, work your way up the ladder until you are sort of doing the most difficult cases and um, just like I say, it's, it's having somebody there whose experience can guide you through it before you go in and even if you need them afterwards or during the surgery. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that was the uh, just a safe, safe clinical environment, which is supported. And, and that was what, uh, uh, what helped. Do you Hi, Millie, um, sorry, go on. Sorry, go on, Will. Go on. Um, I was just going to say, do you, do you set aside time for complications and um, management of issues? Because certainly in my hands and I don't know, some of the papers you read, uh, Papas Puridakis, um, a sort of review of, of full arches, you know, complication rates can be up to 25, 30% covering from biological to mechanical issues. So pre presuming, you know, you'll be within those statistics as I, I presume everyone is, um, do you set aside time for that sort of follow up and management? Yeah, I think um, again, it's, it's it kind of comes back to because we're doing the one thing, the whole business is set up around um, obviously delivering that efficiently and, uh, and managing every everything that can uh, sort of go on. Um, I would say we uh, we we always meet once a week, so we always meet once a week as a team. So we have a multidisciplinary team meeting with the technicians and clinicians. We're always reviewing so the the patients for the week ahead the all the prosthetic fits that we'll be doing the week ahead and then any sort of cases where we have had any complications or, or um, uh, unusual problems and um, and then we'll discuss them within a within a sort of team locally so we'll have a meeting here in Solihull there will be having one in Liverpool and and one in uh, uh, London and then also we can dial into the wider team so I can 
I can dial in with uh, Isabella in Liverpool or Rudy down in uh, clinical lead down in London. Um, so there's a, there's a lot of support and there's a lot of uh, uh, different, uh, I guess, perspectives as well, which is, is quite nice. And then, you know, I think because we're working just on the one type of case uh, or with the one treatment modality, um, we can, uh, uh, we can, I guess, build that into the business, you know, we're vertically integrated. We have all the uh, all the manufacturing and design is done on site. So prosthetically, we can manage everything and and we can have direct input into it. Um, and then the same sort of you know, surgically, we've got that uh, capacity to manage those uh, complications. And how many clinicians do you have in the Sully Hull Clinic, Simon? At the moment, it's just uh, two of us. So there's myself uh, and Maria. So Maria is now. Um, sort of starting out her journey as an intern and um, I get to uh, I get to give her the journey I've been through uh, the last uh, three years and um, yeah it's good we'll have a uh, another one joining us about September time so okay so where Fantastic. is that? <laughs> 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 no, I mean you, you hit on something there and um, just to expand on it it's something that both you and Will were just talking about and when I mean, you do these experience days, which maybe we can talk a little bit more about in some detail in a moment. But when I went up to Liverpool, you you weren't up and running at this point, you and uh, got to see how everything was there. I think that team approach was was fantastic, and the way that there was um, one of the mentees that's just learning there as well, and the way the whole team were involved on the cases, from everybody from the technicians to the clinicians, and the planning of the whole case that was something that Will was touching on there, and the support that you all have. And the way that you all chip in and talk about that the complicated cases and the, the network that you've got i think that adds to that training pathway because i think from from if you didn't understand what happens within evo and the way that everything is organized i think somebody might think well that's a rapid pathway for somebody yes. to be in your position but actually when you see how it actually works and the fact that you just focused on this treatment modality and actually the support that you get you know I, I think it's fantastic. I think that the, the training pathway you have is is superb. Yeah, I think um, I don't know. Like you say, I, I don't know how I would approach this if I was to do it alone in practice. Yeah, you know, um, I don't know how I would approach. It. You'd be if you're doing, you know, four or five cases a year. You'd be having a mentor for a couple of years, probably. Mm. You know, so yeah. I would yeah. feel that that would be necessary <laughs> uh, for myself. And um, you know, I don't feel like it's something you can learn on a weekend. It's, it really is total immersion, and it was just five days a week. Um, if you're not working in surgery, you're working on the prosthetic side, which is you know equally important. And um, uh, having that, uh, having that total immersion, I think as well. What I liked about being in Liverpool was I've got the whole historical uh, patient base to look back at. You know, so I'm seeing the, all the patients from uh, 10, 15 years ago coming back for their checkups, seeing. You know what's in their box what prosthetics have they had um how do things look after all these different uh, different prosthetics and uh, how do things look after all these years and, uh, and yeah it's it's really good for just building up your knowledge base and, uh, and and finding out how to manage these patients is there any um academic sort of didactic learning on your pathway or is it all just hands-on on the on the shop floor as it were Yes, it's it's hands on on the shop floor. I think certainly that's uh, uh, an area that we are um, going to be uh, working uh, working on more uh, more of the academic side alongside what we're doing uh, clinically. It's um, uh, it's it's one of those which is uh, it's a case of time, isn't it? You know, it's mm -hmm. we have uh, like say lots of data um, from all these cases, and it's just a case of um, collating it and, uh, and starting to look. So can I ask, Simran, with the, um, the the patients that are coming through to your clinics, obviously they are having, as you say, the, the, the full arch work done. So, I mean, I, I know some of the answer to this, so really I'm just asking you to explain it to those out there. Not just everybody is suitable for this treatment, which we understand. So you guys have a triage system? That's it, place. yeah. So we can have a... We have a, a sort of a, a patient journey, and that starts with um, starts with the triage system. In fact, um, 
you know, we have a, an inquiry form on our website and um, your patient will fill this out and they will, one of the questions will be, you know, what do you think you need? Is it a single tooth or a few teeth or a whole mouth? And if they select single tooth or um, uh, a few teeth, then they're automatically sort of put to one side. Only until recently we've started working on partnering up, partnering up with clinicians, and now if they select those, it will show them a list of you know uh, clinicians yeah. who are local to them, who are mm -hmm. sort of partnering. Or usually it's people who have been like yourself on experience days and thought, right, you know, we can work together and, and, and help these people. But um, that's one way in which we sort of sort of filtering out who is and isn't suitable. Another is just our patient coordinators, so we get a very detailed triage. Um, you know, how many teeth do they have? What's their condition? What do they think of their dentition? Um, sometimes we'll get photo photos and OPGs as well. Um, and a lot of the time before you even met the patient, you have a good idea of, you know, what category they fall into, the perio, is it dentures, is it um, terminal restorative work? And then, um, uh, and then once they're sort of um, filtered out, I think uh, we did an audit and it's, I think less than 10% of our consultations are um, not suitable for full arch, but that's because the patient coordinators have turned away, I think about 70% of the inquiries. Mm. Uh, yeah. Once we, uh, what I say, once we then um, uh, have them for their consultation, so we, we have a, a free, uh, free full clinical assessment, assessment, CT scan, and, um, and then, you know, patient will get a, a, their treatment plan uh, usually the same day or the next day and then um, yeah sort of take it from there. I mean, that's, that's the key isn't it having efficiency of, of the system yeah. with I mean it, to me it's like a luxury that I'll probably never have in terms of having a you know people to see the patients before I get near them you know because obviously I'd probably have a lot more conversations with people who are completely unsuitable that you know we have to go through the the little dance of saying goodbye or, or moving them on to different areas. Um, what I was wondering is that obviously a lot of people are coming up with terminal dentitions and quite often that can be um, periodontally related. And obviously, as we know, you know, the bugs that have caused the periodontal, periodontal disease or the host responses are still going to be there in implant, full arch implant cases. They don't just go away. What sort of um, follow up and maintenance and how do you kind of get that across to the patient that, you know, you lot are we're all sort of married to our implant patients uh, in some respects, yeah. aren't we? How, how's that side of things managed? I think, um, you know, certainly my approach is, I think you have to be very matter of fact, you know, I'm not there to sell anything. It, I really spend most of the consultation determining, are you suitable? And, you know, what approach we would take and then telling them pretty much all the, you know, all the ifs and buts and certainly patients like that. Um, I think a lot of them have reached a point where it's almost too much to manage their dentition, you know, you know, um, grade three mobile teeth, you know, it's very difficult for them to, to manage it, but you give them a fresh start and you give them all the, so what we do at our um, definitive bridge fits are we give them a water pick, electric toothbrush, single tufted brushes. We design the prosthetics in a, in a way that's cleansable, you know, if it needs to be off the tissue, um, we will do that. And, Obviously, there's uh, an issue with um, patient motivation because sometimes these patients have, have arrived at that point by having a water pick in the cupboard. Um, yeah. You know, it, it's that's my thing. It's just kind of how do you keep them in the loop, as it were? You know, how do you change their habits, which have pro possibly not been very good for so long, to become really good habits to look after that you know the nice devices that are, that are getting put in place by you guys. Yeah, it is something that, like you say, you have to. Uh, you're very clear with them up front um, what it takes to do it, and uh, and then we do see them. Say we see patients depending on their risk profile, either every. I mean, we can determine. I can see somebody as often as I like, but you know, every uh, three, six, nine, or twelve months, depending on. Uh, on that risk profile and then as well it's just mitigating all those risks you know, the only thing you can't really control is the is the patient um but you know you make an assessment we do as part of the triage as well we do something called uh, uh, an oral health impact profiles that's got ohip score and it's sort of a questionnaire which determines 
um, how their dentition is affecting their quality of life based on you know psychologically um, mechanically so uh, all these little factors uh, and uh, even aesthetically so you can sort of determine what are people's motivators what have they struggled with and all you can do is make your best judgment call I think um, you know in my experience uh, patients tend to be motivated after a fresh start not everybody but the vast majority do I think a lot of those who come with let you say a, a full mouth of grade three mobile teeth they they've they've given up maybe a couple of years ago and then just kept their head in the sand and thought you know what it's, uh, I don't want to lose them but when you give them that okay there is a way forward you give them the bots and um, a lot of them I would say the vast majority given a fresh start tend to take it seriously so do they go on a like a maintenance hygiene plan yes yeah yeah so they'll go on a, a maintenance plan they say based on their risk profile which will be you know what was their pre-op situation um and uh you know medical factors things like dexterity age all these all these things we have sort of have a scoring system and then from that we will then put them on a recall uh depending on what their risk is so have you got a is there a hygienist in evo so um all the clinicians do it so we don't have therapists but we do it ourselves um so we'll have uh, uh i guess that was part of my uh part of my uh initial training i was uh doing uh doing some but i think it's quite a good uh it's good just in terms of handling prosthetics you know yeah. taking them off you're cleaning them you're optimizing the fitting surface you know looking can the soft, soft tissue be improved in any way uh, all these sorts of things you're looking at and and yeah it's the clinical team who actually manage it uh, the dentists rather than uh, therapists hmm. and um lab wise um shimran how many um lab techs do you have in in sally hall at the moment we've got three so we have um a digital technician and an uh, analog technician and then um uh, another who kind of does uh, does everything but i think really everybody does everything um uh but yeah we our lab sort of uh we uh we have um uh milling machines so we mill our prosthetics on the day uh, we mill them to the uh, implant uh, interface so directly and um uh we have a team that so usually i'll finish surgery sit in with the digital tech review the design um, and then we'll finalize that together. Now we've got the implant locations and then we'll uh, send that through to Millet and then the analog tech will, will finalize that. And then even just for, I think it's great for, uh, and this is uh, something I, I miss in practice is just for maintenances. So recalls, you know, you can always take it into the lab, again, optimize the fitting surface if you need to, or reline it if you need to, or, yeah. you know, manage repairs and things like that. It's all just there and there. very easy wander into the next room get it dealt with and then uh, um, patient on their way yeah they're do, bit, do do they any, must be busy people <laughs> do you do any sort of pre-op planning do the technicians kind of plan things pre-op at all so do they kind of have the the scan the cbct and have a look at the sort of superstructure and maybe plan that before the patient comes in and is there yeah. any of that or is it just yeah yeah so what we'll do is we'll um that's uh, that's part of our um, multidisciplinary team meeting. So we will yeah. we'll have the the data from the uh, clinical assessment. We'll then, you know, I will usually just record a short video of our of my thoughts about you know the patient, the general uh, idea for the prosthetic plan. Uh, we'll then at the at the meetings we'll we'll get those up. We'll we'll watch the videos and then start. You know, it's it's very it's quite nice because it's. Uh, everybody mucks in there's not uh i'm the boss I, I i say how it goes everybody mucks in everybody's opinions heard and then we we kind of you know do what we think is best for that patient yeah uh, so yeah. we have a general plan and then we get it all up we look at all the data and we 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 uh we finalize that but then let's like say the nature of surgery is you will see something during surgery or you will place your implants in a certain way based on you know what happens during the surgery and it's good to be able to make those tweaks afterwards as well. Yeah. yeah. I was going to say, because the design element can sometimes take quite a bit of time. Yeah. So I'm thinking if you just suddenly gave the, the technician the scan uh, or the cast, depending, I, I think you guys are scanning, you can probably tell me a yeah. little bit more about that in a little bit. Because 
when I was up at Liverpool, they were still uh, using the, the plaster of Paris. But I mm -hmm. thought if you give that to the technician, the technicians then got to design everything. That's quite a lot of work to be able to get that designed and then get that onto the machines and milled and then everything put into place and then fitted because you're probably quite rapid within the surgery uh, because you just basically, you, you know what you're doing. You yeah. pre-planned it, you know where you're going to be putting the implants within reason. If the bone behaves itself, you're quite quick. But those technicians, that takes quite a, quite a lot of time for them to be able to plan that prosthesis from the scan they have and then get it onto the machines again. It takes certainly a lot longer than you probably take to, to put the implants in and close everything up. That's it. Um, I think um, we with us having sort of a, a pre-op um, set, uh, yeah. I guess you call it a wax up, wouldn't you? But a digital one, pre-op digital yeah. wax already, and and most of the time, I would say, you know, we do our surgery. It's it's in the right prosthetic envelope, the placements, and um, uh, we're sort of where we want to be with the wax up. All we're really doing is looking at it and saying, yes, let's let's go to the next stage, and you know, turn that from a digital. Uh, wax up to a physical uh, set of teeth uh, but I would say 90% of that work is done um, you know much long before the surgery and then yeah. um, uh, you know final few tweaks on the day based on you know whatever you see during surgery or, or things like that. I was impressed so your, te go on. your technician was um, saying that they'll be able to mill the whole prosthesis in about an hour and a half or something or they're heading towards yeah. that that level of I mean, that's rapid, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. That's very quick. Very quick. So on average, if a patient was seen by yourself today, um, when would they be looking at having the surgery? Um, I would say, Tomorrow. I don't know, I have to have the treatment call. Half an hour. Um, yeah. yeah um, it would be, let's say, if, if there were... If it was that, they say treatment coordinators would get in touch with them, start the start the process. It would be then consultation, um, and then once they've had you know some time to digest that and the consent, we'd then follow up on the consultation. We do you know basically we call it a validation of the consent. We do that afterwards, um, and then uh, that's probably um, let's say a week, two weeks before surgery, and then surgery. Uh, on the day of surgery, it's you know patient in at nine, patient out at uh, half five with uh, fixed prosthetics, yeah. and then um, we will see them. Uh, we usually follow up just uh, by telephone, so we'll, we'll call them three weeks later. You know, make sure there are no red flags, make sure everything's going okay. If we need to see them, we will. If not, we'll see them then at six weeks. We'll review them, check you know soft tissue healing, check. Um, sort of prosthetic positioning because on the day of surgery usually they're a bit a uh, bit swollen and a bit bit sort of uh, wonky and then uh, if everything looks good uh, 12 weeks we'll fit them with their um, definitive prosthetics sign them off and then it's on to maintenance so it's it's a really sort of regimented um, uh, uh, process and it's you know like I say all our processes are Quite, quite well developed and then it just allows that efficiency to get uh, get everything done uh, smoothly. Flows nicely. Yeah, yeah. So I mean if they had a consult at one week it, it, with availability wise it, it could be likely that they'd be having surgery in three or four weeks time? Something like that, yeah. Yeah. And are many, are many under sedation? Um, yeah, I would say it's interesting on that. We, we've, I mean Historically, we've generally just used um, uh, oral sedation, so tamazepam. Um, and um, I think probably about a year ago, we started doing IV sedation. Um, I don't know. I feel like IV sedation is more intense but shorter, and it's harder to keep them sort of, um, uh, I would say, at a comfortable level throughout the procedure, um, whereas the... Um, the tamazepam, it's not quite as intense, but I think the patient's generally more comfortable throughout the day, almost like it's sort of, you know, slower digesting. Um, I think ultimately well, how I present it to patients is, you know, um, the sedation isn't going to do this for you. And it's one of those where, it, you know, if needs must, then they will know that, you know, actually it's worth going through it, you know, and justify the means. Um, and mm. I think I find patients who rely on sedation have a harder time of it. If that makes sense. I don't know about your yeah, experience yeah. with this. 
Yeah, yeah, probably, probably very similar actually. Depends on um, the patient for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I tend to find generally they they because they're more apprehensive ones. They tend to <laughs> have that kind of, I suppose, that that bigger fear factor. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I, I guess uh, I don't do sedation personally. But you can get somebody to come in and do the sedation for us. I just bore them with my voice. Really, that's what tends to send my speakers. <laughs> Tell them about yeah. your gardening. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's not go there. Um, Let's not. Well, yeah, just got some more compost tonight. So, um, in terms of, I mean, a couple of couple of things that, I mean, you, what you do have in Surrey Hill, because Will's obviously been to your clinic and, and seen that, was the um, the ability to do the intro scanning. Now, is it the photogrammetry that you're using? Yeah, that's slightly different. So yeah. how does that, I mean, I, what we would, what we saw or I saw up in Liverpool was the um, Plaster Paris taking that cast um, and that gave really good accuracy. But you guys, I think you've gone digital. So what are you using on the digital stage? How does that differ? Yeah, it's um, uh, going from the plaster um, impression to photogrammetry. I mean, um, I would say plaster, having used it quite a while, uh, for quite a while is... Um, I think it's good. I think it's it's pretty predictable. Um, I think um, the, the the benefits really of of going to photogrammetry are we can then go modelless, so we've not got you know uh, hundreds and hundreds of uh, uh, boxes of, of of patient models stored, but also it's um, you know uh, even more you know accurate, so more accurate as well for us. Um, I think as well during the procedure it's uh, it's a it does make a big difference uh even just the scan flags are smaller than pickups you've yeah, got a patient yeah. who's had their mouth open for a, a couple of hours they're tired and um you know starting not to uh, starting starting to not cooperate and then you're going to load them up all the way back to the pterygoids with plaster it's not a pleasant uh not a pleasant experience for them or myself so um i think all these little factors and just it sort of naturally fit into our workflow so instead you're just putting scan flags on you're scanning with an extra oral camera and um and within you know 15 20 seconds you've got all the all the data you would get from a three or four minute plaster impression and um uh, like you say we're we're analyzing it to see in terms of you know how does it uh, compare into in terms of accuracy and things but i think um looking at it it's uh, it's definitely improvement well that was going to be my next question really is you're, going to, you're looking at the comparison between the two because I'd, I'd be interested to see because it's some people are a little bit wary of it when it comes to full arch uh, but i've got a colleague that, that swears by it he does a lot of full arch uh, but he's using an intro scanner rather than the uh photogrammic. and then the other thing was the the final prosthesis i mean what, what i saw uh i know it's sold as a functional appliance but it, it's not just a functional appliance is it? it's pretty aesthetic at the end of the day so they do yeah. have some, some very nice looking teeth and it's uh you know what it produces is pretty decent quality stuff isn't it yeah i think um like say we do we do do it or we we kind of our angle is it is a functional rehabilitation um it i think just the aesthetics come as a as a side effect of doing it really you know a lot of these patients like say either are missing a lot of teeth um or uh, terminal perio and um uh, and it is a uh, it is a step forward regardless if you know what i mean um but no it's it's something that say so we do we look at every single definitive at our multidisciplinary team meetings and uh, and really look and uh, and try and get just get the best outcome for the patient you know um yeah uh, it's uh, uh, it's good to have that many eyes on it rather than just uh, just myself I think for yeah. me, the, the, the bit that impressed me was that um, full arch scanner. Um, because, again, when, when you've done it analog, the impression stage just comes at exactly the exactly wrong time, doesn't wrong it? Time, doesn't you it? Know, you know, everybody's literally everybody's using the will to live. The will to live. Um, uh, no, uh, it's, yeah, it's so, really, yeah, so it really makes a difference, I think, for the patient's comfort. Uh, it really does. Mm. I bet. I bet. Well, well gentlemen, gentlemen, do you have any more have questions? Any more because unfortunately, because we've reached, reached that magical, magical time <laughs> of the <laughs> evening. Have, have we lost? You turn the camera off, mate. 
Yeah. My connection seems low at the moment, and I've gone to audio oh. mode. Don't worry, mate. Oh, that's, that's don't fine. worry. Don't worry. Well, you, you, what, you, what you've done is you've actually beaten Will because he's usually <laughs> really rapid. At, uh, I'm usually first one off. <laughs> yeah. Fastest finger yeah. first. You've really upset him. Trying to get trying to get to my first beer of the evening. So uh yeah, yeah. never mind. <laughs> Second place is fine. What, <laughs> what we want to say is obviously a massive thank you. Even though we can't see you, we know that you can hear us. So a massive thank you, Simran, yeah, honestly. Yeah, uh, massive, massive. What we are going to do is there'll be some details of how they anybody out there can contact Evo Dental. So yes. we'll put the details on there. Um, for you. Um, Will Murphy, pleasure as always. Carl Horton, it's all right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> when you say contact, do you, we're going to put the stuff on for the Evo experience oh, for dentists. Hey! Right. Yes, so that anybody, yeah. that, anybody that's sort of listening to this dental wise and also patients that uh, yes. are interested, but the Evo experience, just to say that the thing that Will and I have been on. So you get, you get to go for the day. Don't be late like I was. Uh, but you get to go for the whole day and have a look at how Evo works from the, it's like a tour in the inside of the Cadbury factory, but more, you know, it's more interesting. And, and Simran, you know, I'm, I mean, I've never known all three of us want to ask questions so intensely. I feel we, you've been put under a spotlight there. So I do appreciate it. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you for having us. And yeah, anybody welcome to come spend a day with us and uh, sort of watch a patient journey. Uh, hopefully yeah, highly be, recommend it. Uh, highly recommend it. Right. Well, as we say, we'll definitely put the details on there so that they know who to who to contact. <laughs> Brilliant. Gentlemen, in the meantime, have a fantastic weekend and uh, see you next week. Thank you. Bye. Yeah. Cheers. Take, Take care. care. Bye bye. Bye.